Greetings Diocese of Olympia and all who may be watching. While abuses of power and the misuse of authority are not new phenomena, stories of harassment, assault, and abuse are rightly coming to the forefront of our national conversation, and even more importantly into our church conversations too. The Me Too movement continues to shed light on a society in which men feel entitled to assault and harass women with impunity. Ongoing revelations about the sexual abuse of children and other vulnerable individuals by the leadership of churches across the denominations has shown that our religious institutions are not immune from these issues. As a matter of fact, at this year's General Convention, the Me Too movement was at the center of many of our conversations and on the edges of almost all of them. Here in the Diocese of Olympia, we take our commitment to protect the children and people of our churches very seriously. We make every effort to ensure that the Episcopal Church in Western Washington is a safe and loving environment where all individuals can thrive and reach their full potential. Our churches are only safe if our most vulnerable members are safe. This can include people of all ages, but it especially pertains to our children and our youth. When members of our faith community are betrayed through sexual and other abuses of power, it undermines and destroys the very fabric and mission of the church. It destroys the sense of sanctuary and beloved community that we strive to create and embody. We don't tolerate this behavior and are prepared to address allegations immediately and to the fullest extent of our canonical law, but equally, when possible, civil law as well. Here in the Diocese of Olympia, we place a special emphasis on the safety of our people. Every person in church leadership, whether in the role of clergy, staff, or volunteer, must be vigilant and intentional in making our churches safe, guarding and protecting anyone who might be subject to the abuse of power and authority. Our Safe Church program was instituted almost 10 years ago and teaches participants how to identify and prevent abuse within the church community and is conducted throughout the year free of charge. The training consists of two sessions, Safeguarding God's Children and Safeguarding God's People. Safeguarding God's Children and Safeguarding God's People are required for all canonically resident and licensed clergy. Safeguarding God's Children is required for non-clergy who have a key to the church facility, vestry and bishop committee members, church staff, and anyone who works with children in any capacity. Safeguarding God's people is required for non-clergy who have a key to the church facility, vestry and bishop committee members, church staff, and Eucharistic visitors. We also require background checks for all paid employees and those who work regularly with youth or children at congregations. Many of you have taken these courses over the years, and we are grateful for the way this has been embraced. We know these offerings are not perfect. There are many things that have changed in just these 10 years, mostly good changes that need to be reflected in these training programs, and that work is beginning. But for now, these, even with their imperfections, are what we have, and they have been used with good results in the years since they have been in use. The Office of Bishop has decided to take a look at the training modules in all facets. While the training films themselves will take a huge investment by the Episcopal Church as a whole and is commencing, we here are already making some changes to our policies, and I would like to share a few of those with you now. To make these training requirements more accessible across the diocese, we have enacted the following. If this is a first time training for either program, we strongly recommend that the training is taken in person. If someone isn't able to attend an in-person training, they will be able to take these trainings online, but there will be a secondary one hour training component with one of our certified trainers added to this for compliance purposes, either in person or by video conference. Certificates of completion will not be awarded for first time attenders unless they attend the one hour training component. 
Certificates, once they're completed, are valid for five years. After that time, the training will have to be renewed. The renewal training for safeguarding God's children and for safeguarding God's people may be taken online if the original training was done after 2009. You can find a list of upcoming trainings by following the link below. My office can also help you with background checks for employees, volunteers, and other members of church leadership if needed by following the link on your screen. And please note that the office of the bishop runs its own extensive background checks on all clergy. I would also encourage you to clearly communicate your church's commitment to safeguarding God's children and people across your communications channels. If you would like help with this, our communications director, Josh Hornbeck, would be happy to assist you in developing communication strategies around your safe church policies. Finally, I would encourage each and every person in our diocese to report any concerns about abuse that you may have. This may involve reporting your concerns to a children's or youth minister, your clergy, or our canon to the ordinary, Marta Steedman Sanborn, or directly to me. You will hear more on this topic from many other angles. These trainings are just one small part of a much larger effort to make our churches safe places. But these trainings are an integral part. Thank you for your dedication to this effort. I can't thank you enough for the way you have entered into this topic. And thank you for joining me in creating a safe and loving environment where people of all ages can grow in faith without fear of abuse, assault, or harassment. Thank you.